Likote prako sokote bo sokote bo sikata. Jekote kere bo sokote bo sikata. Yakote kere bo sikete bo sikata. Zakote kere bo sokote mo sikata. Yakote kere bo sokote mo sikata. Yakata ma sokote le bo sita. Jakote le bo sokote bo sokota. Yakata ma sokote bo seketa. Jakote kere bo sokota. Yakote kere bo sokote mo sikata. Yakote kere bo sokote mo sikata. Likata la ba sikata. Zekote kere bo sokote mo sikata. Jekote mo sokota. Jikata ma sokota. Yakote kere bo sokota. Jikata ma sokote bo sokota. Jekote kere bo sokota. Likote prako sokote bo sokota. Ma sokote le bo sokote bo sokota. Jakote kere bo sokota. Jikata ma sokote le bo sokota. Jekote kere bo sokota. Jakote mo sokota. Yakote kere bo sokota. Let's take our seats. Welcome once again, and I'm praying that the spirit of truth is going to be ushering us once again in today's presentation, and praying that the Holy Spirit is going to give us the word of life, the word of truth, the word that sustains us, the word that gives us motivation, the word that is assured us of total salvation now we are still in the series presentation we are still in the ongoing conference and today i'll be marking day four introducing day four of the cape town teleportation conference and in the previous presentations i've been sharing a series presentation that is titled the marine stronghold which is the same season that is going to continue today and in this season and series presentation inside today's segment we continue once again with the marine stronghold which is now the part four and for us to understand more on this part four let us get into scriptures in, in the book of john chapter 4 verse 3 in the book of john chapter 4 verse 3 and in the book of john chapter 4 verse 3 and he left judea and that is jesus leaving judea and he departed again into galilee and he, he must by then he was supposed meaning he went through samaria then he came to a city of samaria which is called Sika, near to the parcel of ground that jacob gave to his son joseph now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, meaning being tired, he sat by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. The reason why Jesus is sat by the well by the sixth hour is because Jesus is prophetically chose to wait on that particular destination and uh, that particular site and that particular site is a well i'm soon going to be revealing why jesus in particular had to go and stand on that well what was jesus waiting for and why did jesus go and particularly wait on that well now jacob's well was there and jesus having waited there about the sixth hour there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Now, the woman of Samaria that came to draw water came to draw water at the very same time when Jesus was already waiting at the well, meaning that Jesus was waiting for this woman in that particular well. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be explaining why Jesus was waiting at that well. Why specifically? Besides the fact that Jesus was waiting for this Samaria woman at the well, there has to be a revelation why wait for that woman at the well when this woman could have been met at other specific points why particularly at the well for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy meat and jesus 
had to divert himself away from his disciples to go and wait at that well, not just waiting for the woman. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, you ask a drink of me, of which I am a woman of Samaria? Jesus is further even asking for a drink from that woman. And to make matters worse, the woman is saying, How is it that you, being a Jew, you ask for a, for a drink from me, knowing that I'm a Samaria? Meaning that the Jews in Samaria, the Jew, the Jewish and the Samarians, there was a, a demarcation, there was a conflict, there was a, a content, a contention between these two. And Jesus also being able to draw water, Jesus actually waits for this woman to come so that Jesus can inquire this woman to draw water. But this is not about the inquiry that Jesus has made for the Samaritan woman to draw water for him. And then Jesus answered him and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that said unto you, Give me water to drink, then you would have asked of him and he would have given you the living water. Now, I'm taking you back to the very part that I said I was going to elaborate which i promised that i'm going i'm going to simplify to you why jesus was waiting particularly at the well now jesus is talking about had you known who was talking to you then you would have known that he has got the capacity to give you the living water the living water that jesus is talking about is not the water that is inside the well and the water inside the well is a mystery the water in the well is a mystery of a portal that goes to the sea. And this is why Jesus has come to wait at the well for this woman. The specific point where Jesus has come to wait for this woman, it is a point not only of drawing water unto Jesus, but it is also a point where Jesus is prepared to give this woman living water. Meaning that the water that this woman has been drawing, it is not water that is living. It is not purified water, but it is a significance and a representation of a site that is a portal to the underworld. The portal of the waters that lead to the marine kingdom is a portal connection that connects anyone that is being monopolized, that is being supported by the marine kingdom. Now, I need you to understand this. Why would Jesus talk about the living water and also be waiting at the well where this woman is about to draw water? And when Jesus is even asking for water, Jesus is merely poking this woman. Jesus is merely provoking this woman. Jesus is merely approaching this woman so that Jesus can be able to present his matter. Why? Because at first this woman actually thought that this was an ordinary man that wanted to propose to, propose to him. I'm soon going to be getting into the fact file of this woman so that you actually understand who really this woman was and what does she do and what was this woman all about. Then the woman said unto him, Say, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. And it was true. This woman realized that there was nothing to draw with. There was nothing, absolutely nothing to draw with. Nothing to draw with. But Jesus was promising to give this woman living water. So how was Jesus going to give this woman living water? knowing that there was nothing to draw with meaning that the water that jesus was talking about was not even water that is a liquid substance it was the water of the living spiritual dimension of the holy spirit and the dimension of the living water is the water that was supposed to replace the water which defines the site, the water that defines the portal connection that determines the life of this woman. And then the woman is saying, Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us a well, and we drink thereof, 
including himself and his children and his cattle. And Jesus answered and said, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The water that springs up to everlasting life is the water that is purified. It is the water that heals. It is the water that delivers one from all impurities. Meaning that there is water that leads to the waters that are dirty. Meaning that there is water that leads to the sea. Water that leads to another kingdom of water, but the water that leads to that kingdom of the sea, which is the underworld, it is water that is not cleansed. But the water that Jesus wants to give this woman, it is the purification process of healing. But the healing needs to be explained after we find out what really it is that Jesus wanted from this woman. Then the woman said unto Jesus, Give me this water so that I do not thirst again. Then Jesus said unto the woman, Go call thy husband to come hither. Then the subject immediately changed. The subject suddenly changes. And what has suddenly made the subject change is because the matter of the subject was never about the woman. It was never about the water which the woman was thinking about. It was never about the well, but it was about the lifestyle of this woman. But how is the lifestyle of this woman connected to the water that she wanted to receive? And how is it connected to the water that Jesus is saying, this water that you are drawing is not going to give you life? Jesus is not talking about water. But Jesus is talking about two kingdoms. When Jesus is talking about the living water, he's talking about the kingdom of God, which gives you the purified water. When Jesus is talking about the water in the well, he's talking about another kingdom. And the kingdom that he's talking about, which is the water that he, she will drink and she continues to thirst, it is the water that will not heal you from the lust of the flesh. It is water that will not heal you from the addictions of the flesh. It is water that will not heal you from all the infirmities of the flesh. It is not water that will heal you from all the cravings inside your flesh. Meaning that the water that Jesus was referring to, both the living water and the water that does not give life, those are two different kingdoms. And then Jesus suddenly says, go and call your husband to come here. When Jesus says, go and call your husband to come here, Jesus again is provoking a, a, a revelation. And the revelation that Jesus is provoking here is a revelation that Jesus is trying to prove to this woman that all this time when I was saying I can give you the living waters is because I want to draw you out of the waters of the well that does not give you purified water. I want to draw you out of the waters. I want to draw you out of the oceans. I want to draw you through the portal of the waters. The well where Jesus and this woman are standing, it represents a portal to the waters, not of the living waters, but the waters of the underworld, the waters of the sea the waters of the marine kingdom and when jesus is saying go and call thy husband jesus is now giving this woman the type of demon the identity of the strong man the identity of the stronghold that is fighting against this woman i want to talk about the marine stronghold of fornication When Jesus is saying, go and call thy husband to come here, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Then Jesus said unto her, you have spoken well, for you said you have no husband. Why? For you have had five husbands. And these five husbands have never been your husbands. They've never been permanently, permanently your husbands. And even the one that you have right now is not your husband. Meaning that this woman was in a lifestyle. This woman was in a pattern, a pattern of dating and breaking up. 
this woman was in a pattern of getting into a relationship and having sex after sex she breaks up meaning that this woman was in a pattern of being in a relationship when she gets into a relationship after a while she breaks up meaning that this woman had some even some connections where she would just meet up with a man and just have sex and after sex they break up that's the type of life that this woman was living but the mystery is why is all this being revealed to the world the mystery is what does the issue to do with the woman get a reference of the water that she's drawing out of the well jesus is setting up a comparison of two different kingdoms by defining them using waters and the water waters that are being defined there are in two different categories there is first the water of the living life the water that gives life and the water that is being drawn from the well the water that will not quench the thirst of this woman why because the thirst of this woman is inside her flesh it is inside the blood and the blood is a component of water and the blood being a component of water the marine strongholds the marine stronghold of fornication enters through the blood enters through the water and then the blood and then starts afflicting someone and then you start having some cravings you start having some addictions you start having some lust you start having some some endless lust and cravings and sexual feelings that cause you not to be content with one way, one man and when you are not content with one man you end up dif- dating different men you continue dating different men and when you are dating different men and none of those men remain as your men none of those men remain as your permanent husband why because you cannot get married to different men and even the one man that she had at that particular time when jesus was giving this revelation that man was not even a, a husband jesus says you have spoken well for you have had five husbands and the one that you have is not even your husband meaning that the cycle that this woman was involved in was a very displeasing cycle of fornication a displeasing cycle of fornication whereby she was dating to break up she was dating temporarily she was dating for the sake of her flesh she was dating for the sake of of just pleasing her body she was dating for the sake of pleasing her flesh she was dating just to for the sake of pleasing her mind this is why jesus is saying the water that you're drawing from this well it will never quench your thirst why because this water represents the sea of the marine kingdom but this water that i want to give you which you are saying you i don't even have anything to draw this water it is not water that is here it is water in in another realm there are waters in different realms the marine kingdom is not just at the sea there is the water of the living life there is the living water which is in the realms of the living life in the realms of the spirit the living water is the word of life in the realms of darkness the same seas that you see that have been gathered as oceans they are not just oceans they are realms of waters in the spirit and those realms they make up a kingdom of the marine i hope someone is understanding what i'm saying here then the woman then said say i perceive that you are a prophet when the revelator was preaching when jesus was speaking then the woman said i say i perceive that you are a prophet because why because you're speaking about my life after that parabolic explanation after that revelation after that description the woman said i perceive that you are a prophet even though jesus is more than a prophet but the reason why this woman is saying i perceive that you're a prophet is because the things that have been exposed by jesus here they carry a prophetic degree they carry accuracy in the sense that the things that have been revealed about this woman uh, they are accurate and they are true this woman was exchanging men she was bound by the marine strongmen she was 
bound by the marine fornication stronghold. She was bound by a fornication stronghold from the marine kingdom. And all Jesus wanted to do was to give her the water that gives her life, the water that is living. And Jesus wanted to disconnect her from the well of the water that does not end her thirst. Jesus wanted to close the portal at the well of the water that does not give life, but the water that will lead her unto death and the water that will never quench her thirst, the water that will never end the thirst of her lust, the water that will never end the cravings inside her flesh. Child of God, I'm here once again this very day to present this part four segment of the marine strongman and i'm praying that inside your thoughts inside your mind inside your imaginations you defeat the last of the flesh you are given the living waters the living waters that have the capacity to quench the thirst inside your flesh the living waters that will end the last inside the flesh the living waters that will synchronize your spirit with the kingdom of the living waters the living waters that will disconnect you from the well of the water that does not quench your thirst and i'm praying in the name of jesus that you defeat the strong man of fornication let's stand up and pray Sokota, Masokote Bosokota, Zekote Mosokota, in Jesus' mighty name.